watch this full series at the links in the description below and subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch new mental health videos every week. Do you believe that there are children who are depressed only because there is something chemically different in their brain, not because they are bullied at school, don't have something, aren't getting their basic needs met. It's just a chemical imbalance in their brain. Yeah, I think to answer that question, it's, it's impossible to isolate that only. And, and let me explain that. We are, no matter what, even if we have a very high genetic predisposition to depression, it doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to be depressed. There's always- Wait, say that again. All right, so if you have a genetic predisposition to depression, if you have first degree relatives that have severe depression, mm -hmm. your likelihood of depression is very high. It's much higher than the average population, like almost four to six times higher, mm -hmm. right? Now that's gonna predispose you to depression. However, that doesn't mean that you are definitely gonna be depressed. There is always the psychosocial stuff. There is always, how you were raised in those first few years, the experiences that you had, the resilience that you've developed over that time period. The difference is that you may be more sensitive in a certain respect and develop depression easier than the mm. average person, okay? Okay. okay? So I think the important, the, the important sort of phrase or term would be that you might be more um, sensitive or more apt to depression, or you might not have the amount of resilience that another individual may have. Mm -hmm. So it might be easier for you to develop a depressive episode, but there's always going to be upbringing and family and social and peers, Got it. right? But the biology can definitely steer people that way. Yes. And I've seen people with that. I've seen people that have first degree relatives that are very depressed and develop these depressed, depressive episodes and otherwise in a different person that maybe doesn't have that genetic load, maybe wouldn't have gotten depressed, right? Yes, right. It's very hard to tell, you know, to sort of like split those hairs. Yep. But we know for sure that there's a genetic link. We wow. know for sure, right? That so, was a good explanation. So to answer your question, there are people biologically predisposed to depression, yes, mm -hmm. but that doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to be depressed and it doesn't necessarily mean that that is the only reason that you're going to be depressed. How do you start to talk to a child about taking this medicine, why they're taking yeah. it, what's going to happen? How do, how do you get a child to tell you what the side effects are? I mean, there's a lot going on here. Yeah, you got it. And I think, you know, when we talk about kids, Kyle, it's, it's, it's a really diverse population. Like, you know, the difference between a 40 and a 55 year old really isn't that much, but the difference between a five year old and an 18 year old yeah. is huge, huge right? right? So, so we have to sort of broaden this context a little bit. I think that obviously when it's a younger child, they're, you know, like you said, that Prozac and certain medicines come in a liquid form or, you know, or a chewy or a gummy or something like that. So you give it to the child and are you really going to have that conversation with a five-year-old or a six-year-old? They're probably not going to understand too much about that aside from, hey, we're giving you a medicine to help you feel better, right? Mm -hmm. The adolescence, of course, you know, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, they ask a lot of questions and that's good. They, they should ask questions. And, you know, some of them have misconceptions and I think it's important to clear up those misconceptions. They think that they're going to be on it forever, that it's going to change who they are. It's going to change their personality. It's going to turn me into a zombie. I've heard all of these things. And, and I think having a very realistic discussion of the expectations of what the medicine is going to do or not do is a very important discussion to have with an adolescent, because here's the truth. If a child, an adolescent specifically, has a negative outlook about taking a medicine, then that might even offset the, the possibility that's gonna help, right? If they have this real negative attitude about taking it, they don't wanna take it, maybe they're not gonna take it, maybe they're gonna spit it out. Maybe, you know, kids are pretty, you know, elusive sometimes with these things. And, and if they don't think it's gonna help them, they'll get away, they'll, get a, they'll find a way to not take it, right? Mm -hmm. So, the way that I explain medicines is my, my story of the bicycle, right? And, and I, this is an important story and I, and I want parents to, to talk. You can use this example with your kids. You can say, listen, if getting better is learning how to ride a bicycle really well and you've never ridden a bicycle before in your life, the medicine is making sure that there's enough air in those tires. 
because right now you have some flat tires and it's making it really hard for you to pedal uphill, right? Okay. But if we give you some medicine, it's going to put some air in those tires and it's going to make pedaling that bike easier, which pedaling the bike is going to therapy and getting your life back together. It's, it's not going to teach you how to ride the bike, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But it's going to make it a little bit easier to get you over those hills on the bike. Mm -hmm. Get it? Yes. And, yes. and I think that's a very important expectation for kids. Adolescents get that. And that, that story resonates with a lot of my patients. They go, oh, okay, I get it. There is so much hope surrounding this. And I know for me, a medication changed my life. This is a big statement, but I don't, I don't even know if I'd be here if I wasn't put on Prozac. Mm -hmm. It was so bad. And it gave me light, hope, air. I felt like I could finally be a yep. human. And so I hope that parents will get this education and use it to make a better informed decision. Thanks for watching. Check out the links below for more information on how to access this full series and subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch new mental health videos every week. Did you like what you heard in this video? If you wanna ask a MedCircle doctor a question directly, you can learn how by visiting the links in the description below. Thank you.